Good morning. Welcome to the third lecture of this week and in this particular course we are trying to understand how to reduce GHG emissions and focus is remaining on scope 1 and 2 emission reduction through building design and construction. In the previous two lectures of this week we have looked at how the emission reduction the calculations for emission reduction can be done for HVAC and fenestration design and today we are going to look at how it can be done for building envelope. Now when we are talking about building envelope we are actually looking at all the components which are isolating or differentiating the indoor from outdoor the elements of building that are going to do that distinguish it from the outdoor environment is what we are knowing as building envelope. One of these components if you remember one component of this building envelope we have already taken in uh, discussion in the previous lecture the lecture 2 of this week. So, the calculations remain exactly the same for the remaining components except for one thing which is what we are going to discuss. So, U factor we have clearly understood that U factor is the thermal transmittance overall thermal transmittance which is the rate of transfer of heat through the material over a given period of time and area. Now, the units we have already seen what are the units. Now, what is the difference between calculating the heat exchange and energy reduction through that for a fenestration a glass window versus a wall or a roof. These are the three primary elements of building envelope that we will get. We will have the transparent surfaces like that of glass which could be a window or a skylight part of the roof. It would be walls of different materials and roofs. So, what is the primary difference? The primary difference is that these components of wall and roof are largely opaque and there is no direct radiation that is transmitted through them. So, there is no direct transmission of the radiation and hence there is no solar heat gain coefficient that becomes redundant there is no there is no SHGC because there is no radiation and there is no need to calculate that. Rest of the calculations remain exactly the same. So, what we have is we have this clear formula Q is equal to U A delta T again for the say walling materials or the roofing materials what will remain the same if we are comparing only between the choice of materials not going into design uh, for these calculations. The areas will remain the same, the delta T will remain the same, the difference of indoor and outdoor temperature will remain the same. What is changing is U and we have already seen that how important is this U value. We reduce U value by half the energy consumption or the, uh, the heat exchange reduces by half. We double it the Q doubles up. So, it is directly proportional. So, we have to be very very careful about the material that we are choosing and rest of the calculations will remain exactly the same as we have done for fenestration. Now, here let us look at the different options that we have. So, for example, if we have sandcrete wall with plaster the approximate U value which we are getting is 1.135. If you would look at some of the other typical uh, values for example, the typical double brick has a u value of 1.7 of course these u values will also change from region to region the bricks in india and the construction quality has a role to play in the final u value that we are getting suppose we are having walls with insulation so the u value reduces to as low as 0.4 which is a direct reduction and depending upon the area of this particular material whatever we are discussing here, we will get the reduction in heat gain through this particular surface. And the moment we have Q1 and Q2 the difference between the original the uh, heat gain and the uh, secondary heat gain it is directly proportional to the amount of energy that will be required to cool the space condition the space and we can directly calculate over a period of time the scope 2 reductions would be Q1 minus Q2 multiplied by the carbon emission factor for this country for whatever country we are taking. 
So, we will get how much of the carbon emission saving is going to happen through our choice of material. So, if you look at databases, there are a lot of databases which are available for India. The database that we are using for most of the commonly available materials is available in ECBC energy conservation building code and there is an annexure which is there you can get the U values from there and depending upon the areas that we have the surface areas for each different type of material we can calculate how much saving is going to happen over a period of time. So, we can calculate it on an yearly basis on a daily basis it will it will change for more accurate results as I had said earlier also and I am repeating we will have to do whole building simulation using simulation uh, tools, simulation software which will give us all of this together in one single figure. So, the impact of fenestration, the impact of wall, the impact of roof, the impact of HVAC, the impact of using LED lights all that we have discussed can be calculated in one single uh, at as one single model, but it requires all that data to be modeled together and it requires resources. So, here are the simple calculations that we can have to know how much savings can be can be achieved. So, that is all in this lecture. Thank you very much. See you tomorrow. Bye bye.